You're right, guys. Welcome to Football and Fitness United. My name's James, and we're here with former Premier League bagsman Nathan Ellington to try and dissect what just happened in the Manchester derby. So, first things first, how are you, mate? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm just glad that we got some some kind of dignity back in the game at the end. But obviously, they've changed the whole side. But again, look, I'm just happy we had something to say, you know, to be happy about in the end. But look, 6-3, it's not great, is it? It, it showed the golfing class. Um, I, I really feel like the manager there, I think he was a bit naive today, um, trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Man City we know who kind of wiped the floor with us if we try and do that. And um, I thought he felt like he already knew that we weren't ready for that kind of stuff yet. And um, and he still went ahead and did it. So um, we were open as hell, played right into their hands. When over the last few years, I think we they've played into our hands. This yeah. time it was a totally the opposite way around. So that's the problem in it, because before the game, I was looking at it and I was like, I'm seeing a lot of confident United fans because we were obviously in good form. We'd won four in a row. And I was like, you can't underestimate this City team. We're at the beginning of a process and they're four or five years into theirs. And they're basically the end goal that we're trying to reach. Like, you looked at them on the yeah. pitch. You mentioned golf in class today. I mean, how impressive are they as a football team? Let's start off with City. How good are they? Mate, they're unbelievable under, under pressure. They're under, they just keep the ball for fun, make you chase. And then as soon as you they lose it, they just win it straight back. And we played into their hands with that as well. We, For some reason, we felt like we had to score as soon as we got the ball back. Like, we're not going to do that. You have to get hold of it, keep it and try and do something. Only one when they like pushed right up the field, do we then need to attack quick? So yeah, and they know exactly what to do in every part of the pitch. To be fair, so that was the difference. Where you know under pressure they can keep it, and then they move the ball up between the threads, and then they just take care. They take advantage of any opening and just yeah. make it look like there's no possibility of defending it. And it just was men against boys. It's, it's people that had practice. You can see the practice and practice it. And we are just like new to it all. And um, yeah, it was just a, a day out in the training field for them. And um, it, it didn't feel like last year, but it was still, it was like, in a way it was easier for them than last year. But at the same time, like we were trying. It, it's weird. <laughs> it's just very weird. That City are just far too good. And especially they're, Ireland. They're very good, man, didn't they? And Neville mentioned it in, in commentary, basically. Just that, you can't get the ball back off them. And when we did win the ball back, we seemed, like you said, too excited to do something with it. It was like, oh my God, we finally got the ball. Let's rush. And the, yeah. there was very few times where we actually just put put our foot on the ball, looked up, picked a pass, kept possession for like 30, 45 seconds. Like I think at the end of the first half, I think we had 38% possession. I don't know how. I never saw us have the ball, mate. And to be honest, <laughs> like you say we played into their hands. With City, if they go 1-0 up, it's a very, yeah. very difficult task, in it? Because you have yeah. to come out then and then they're, they're loving life. So we'll move on to a, to a couple of people that had superb games, obviously, um, before we come on to the negative that is Manchester United. So first of all, Erling Haaland, as, as a former striker, you know what it's all about. Just how high is this guy's ceiling? Like, where is he in world football at the moment? East Street's ahead. In terms of a number nine, yeah, like all-out goal scorer, there's no one better than him. I don't think there's anyone better than him at smelling danger and then finishing it all off. It's like, he's a souped-up Lewandowski, like, and he's young, young as hell. So he's going to be, for years to come, just a dynamite, especially with a team like City. It's like, you've got everything you need. Like, don't have to do much. You just smell it and score it. And look, three hat-tricks, three games. You can't... I, I was saying the start of the season, I thought he'll score four or five games in multiple games this season. He's doing the freeze. It's yet to come. It, it, it's around the corner, the fours and the fives. I'm telling you, I would probably score five goals probably twice this season and um, probably about five more hat-tricks as well. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a nightmare. But, you know, we just got to... You know, we said it. he's a cheat code. You know, once he joins City, it's over. And um, it definitely is now. That Champions League should be theirs now to be able... You know, theirs to lose because he's in there. He's going to make the massive difference between them not winning and winning it. Yeah, so speaking of things that have happened a couple of times this season, that's the second time we've been 4-0 down at half-time. Um, what do you put that down to? Is that a mentality problem? Is it just taking too many risks on the pitch? Like, like how can we be 4-0 down twice in the same season? It, it's mad. 
Obviously, against Brentford, you don't expect to be 4-0 down. But against City, you shouldn't be 4-0 down, obviously, if you're on your game. But you know, any little mistakes, you'll be 4-0 down against City. And it's not like it's a surprise. The other one would have been surprised. This one, it was like, we went out there, we had one defensive midfielder and two attacking midfielders. I'm sitting there thinking, should we really be trying to do that at City against City away? Like, we need to be compact. We need to sit there in two banks of four and just, like, tighten everything up and go, look, beat us. You know, don't be, like, fully spread out trying to press them. And the, look, one of the goals, we were all trying to go up and we left, like, we left a few players. But you can't do that against City. They'll score at every single chance of that. You can't allow them chances. We had to be very hard to beat and get the first goal. We weren't hard to beat and we didn't get the first goal. So it was totally the opposite of what I was expecting. Yeah, listen, there was an argument pre-game like, oh, Casemiro or McTominay. For me, the argument and the discussion was never had because it was never going to happen. But Casemiro and McTominay probably should have played because we needed to yeah. literally get a hold of that midfield, which clearly we didn't. And um, so before we go on to the negative performances and stuff, was there any shining light for Manchester United? I know you touched on the fact yeah. that the three goals weren't embarrassing, but, you know, like, mm. is there anything positive we can take from it? I think second half, um, I, I, I was w watching Anthony and everything he did. Um, it looks like he doesn't take chances when he knows there's no chance. But then when there was an opening, he took his chance. And that's what I've been waiting to see from this guy. Over the last few games, I've been like, why is he just like getting up, standing up his man and then just playing it back? Standing up his man, playing it back. He's waiting for that opportunity where he can do something and it's likely to happen. And that is very, very mature from him. So I really, really thought, you know what? That showed me great maturity and the goal he scored was great. And, uh, and the way he like lures people in and then plays other people in, we've got to get used to getting him on the ball a lot more. And again, that was a shining light for me. And then Martial coming on and getting his two goals, scoring a brilliant penalty as well. Um, and, and just being there for the tapping afterwards. And I've, said, I've always said I love, I love Martial. And I think that he's obviously had a little bit of a rough ride during his time here. But I think he can, if he can just stay fit, he will be very important to us getting third or fourth or fifth, whichever one it is. He will be the difference between us missing out or or getting that position, I believe. Yeah, man. Uh, listen, I don't want to keep you. The final thing we'll touch on is, is there, was there any particular negatives like players that you didn't really think performed today or was it just a team thing? To be fair, for me, it looked like it was a, a full thing where we were just nowhere near them as a team like I couldn't look at players and go you were bad or you were bad we were just not good enough they were just far too good if you get what I mean and as a team we're just not good enough to beat them we weren't good enough in in that the way we set up we were never going to beat them playing that way so I can't really blame anyone they can't blame Ericsson for being put uh, marking Haaland uh, is it his fault that he's marking Haaland and, and then you know and then he's marking Foden for the goal I know he should have done better but that would have probably been better if it was a Fred marking him there because, you know, someone like that is a defensive minded who needs to stick with his man. That's where you might get a clean sheet and then someone else up the field goes and gets a goal out of nowhere and then hopefully we can hang on to it. But yeah, it was it was a tactics thing for me. I think um, majorly, not, not that we lost because of tactics, but I'm saying we could have made it a harder game if we had a, a bit different tactics, maybe some Oli tactics from a few years back. So. Yeah, I mean, people slated Fred and McTominay, but it worked a few times against City, didn't it? Anyway, exactly. uh, cheers, Nath. I know you've got your own show now. You're doing your own reaction. Do you want to give a plug to your own channel, like send people across there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But look, um, it's Duke's United show, and then we're all here to support each other. You know, you've just started yours as well. A nice, very nice um, setup you've got there as well. And I'm we always try. here to support. So, yeah, it's um, great stuff. Yeah, big up, Nathan. So as you can see at the bottom, please like, comment, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. It all helps massively. And thank you very much to Nathan for his time. Uh, this will be up after his show, but hopefully you all went over there and tuned in to his show anyway, because it's worth it. You want to hear more from the big man. But uh, yeah, cheers, Nathan. I've been James. He's been Nathan. 6-3, and we'll see you next time. Cheers, guys. <laughs>